Hi everyone and welcome to a video where we're not going to be doing a great deal of CNC or 3D printing but we are going to be using Fusion 360 to help us design a 19 inch rack cabinet or in fact two of them and the reason for that is I want to get the desk you can see in front of you out of the way because it's taking up a lot of room for not much storage and also want somewhere better to Put that power amplifier that's on the desk and also the mixing desk that's on top of it and i've got a pc as well that i'd like to mount in that and connect up to the keyboards it should be a very cheap build because the only components that i need to purchase are some standard 19 inch rack mounting brackets which you can get from amazon very cheaply in a variety of different lengths whereas the wood i'm going to build the actual cabinets from will be chipboard and mdf that i've recovered from another DIY project elsewhere around the house. Before we start however we're going to need a design and for that we need to go to Fusion 360 so let's step over there and start. So here we are in Fusion 360 and I won't do a step by step on the design of this because it's fairly easy to do. You just take uh, each wall of the cabinet is essentially a sketch and you do a rectangle um, to the correct size and then you start drawing in the rebates for either gluing the whole cabinet together or that central shelf. Even better than that, once you've done one side you can put a construction plane in the middle of the cabinet and then mirror it to create the other side and in fact I've done that to create two cabinets to see what they look like side by side and also put the 19 inch brackets in there as well. Normally once I got the design I would be using CAM for CNC or sending it to Cura for slicing for 3D printing but in this particular instance we're actually going to put the design onto a drawing which is just create drawing from design is one of the options under the file menu and then you can start placing various views on your drawing and also call out various dimensions and the critical one here is that 483 millimeter dimension at the top because that's the width of a standard 19 inch rack. The other dimensions will of course be using to measure out the various pieces of wood to make the cabinet itself. Okay having got the design printed out the first job we're going to do is start cutting the sides top and bottom and shelves on the table saw. For the backs I actually used a piece of plywood so I got the circular saw out and cut the back pieces out of that. And after checking the size of the rebate that I was going to be routing on the table router on a piece of scrap wood just to check the dimensions are okay, it was then a case of passing a fair bit of the plywood and MDF through the table router uh, using multiple passes, don't want to try and do it all at once and create those rebates. Also to make sure that the tops and the bottoms matched perfectly I also used a flush trim router you saw just there. So, more rebating and then we know that these two bits are going to match perfectly. With all our pieces prepared then it's on to assembly using tight bond glue as usual. And just basically assemble the box essentially, the sides of the cabinets and use some long sash clamps to clamp it all together. Now providing you've got your measurements correct and, they, and the sides match and the top and the bottom match, everything should glue together quite square but it's always worth checking with a, a square afterwards just to make sure and then we just clamp everything up and leave it overnight then we are going to put the back on which is again more tight bond glue and that should fit into the back there look 
again clamp up and leave it another night for it to set properly. Now to make the vents in the back of the cabinet we need a template and you can see me here using a table router and luckily actually the uh, MDF had a couple of small slots in it already and it's just a case of routing between those slots to make our template which we can then use double sided tape on and using a drill there just to take uh, a hole out so that we, we're essentially side milling if you like with the router we can plunge and route out the vents and especially with MDF it's worth, worth wearing a mask and having somebody there with a vacuum cleaner to uh, get rid of all the dust that comes off of MDF. So having finished the basic construction I then did a bit of filling as you can see on the side there where I was routing and initially I tried spraying the emulsion paint straight onto the cabinet after I'd sanded it a bit to give it something to key into but that didn't actually work very well so I abandoned that idea and just went with a roller and the paint and that covered much better. So whilst I finish painting the cabinet in time lapse I probably need to discuss the casters. Now I've got two sets, one set has got a break on them which is very useful for a heavy cabinet and the other set is just a standard set of office casters and A I need a way of mounting those onto the bottom of the cabinet and also need a way of evening up the heights of both sets of casters. So once I've finished screwing the rack brackets into the side of the cabinet we're going to step over to Fusion 360 again. Okay, quick trip into Fusion 360 and we'll start with a sketch which is just going to be a square, four holes around the outside here, one central hole uh, with a concentric ring and I'll show you what that's for in a second. Just extrude that out so the right height compensate for the two different types of caster. Then that concentric ring will extrude up and cut into the material to create that inner ledge there. And then we'll extrude up again and join and therefore we've got a little ring shape recess which is where that spring washer can sit when we push the caster into it. And then we'll fill it back so it's a little easier to get it in and out of that groove so it's not in there permanently. Then we've got a bit of filleting on the entrance just so it's easier to get the thing into the block in the first place. And then we'll put some counter sinks on the screw holes so that when we use essentially a standard screw to screw to the bottom of the rack cabinet they will be flush just under the surface and then we'll also fill it the edges to take the sharp edges off like that. Okay well that's ready for printing and we can get those on the cabinet. Having printed our mounting blocks then we can mount the set that mount directly into the bottom of the cabinet and they have the brakes on and the office chair set of casters which go through the block and they're exactly the same height and the cabinet is now nice and level and we can stop it from rolling off and then it's just a case of loading it up with all the uh, rack mount gear and a few other items, speakers, the record collection and a, and a turntable there and we're ready to go. So thanks as ever for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.